Hi, my name's Trapper Hallam, an ITC geek, and today I'm here to talk about Edgenuity. What is Edgenuity? Edgenuity is our district's virtual credit forward and credit recovery curriculum. It's a robust program with lots of options, but in this video, we're going to talk about just the basics, enough to get you up and running and able to manage your own class. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at Edgenuity. To get there, you can go to learn.edgenuity.com. To start, let's just go in and take a look at the basic navigational tools and the interfaces that you're gonna interact with. Then I'd like to take you in right away and look at what it looks like to be a student and check out the curriculum and all the things that they can do and have to offer and the things that they can't do. Let's go take a look at that now. Now, when you enter Edgenuity, you're gonna enter into the dashboard. This is a spot that you'll spend a good chunk of time grading papers, looking at attempts, and dealing with alerts. Now, there are other menus to look at here, so let's take a quick look at them. There is a student menu, a course menu, and a more menu where you can find communications and reports. Now, on these menus, there are things that you may interact with, but a majority of this stuff, if you're just running a class and dealing with students, you won't need to navigate to. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is get you right in to see what the courses look like. There are two ways that we can do this. There's a teacher course view where we can see the students work, we can see the structure of their course and their attempts. Additionally, we can see their answers and the snippets that they interacted with in the course. We can also bypass and do some other things in there. So you'll spend a good chunk of time there as well. So let's take a look at that view. And then after that, let's jump in and see what it looks like to be in the course as a student. All right, let's take a look at this teacher course view. To get there, we're gonna to go to the student menu. We're gonna scroll down to manage students and we're gonna click on that. That's gonna bring up a menu where you might have to change a filter, but once you get it set up, it should show you your class. Once in your class though, we don't need to interact with any students. What we're gonna do instead is that as a teacher, you're given your own student account. So you as a student. To get there, we're gonna go ahead and choose this right here, which says select my account. Now, when you go in here the first time, there shouldn't be any courses assigned to you because there has been none. So what you're going to do next is you're going to come up here to add courses and you're going to add a course to yourself. So go ahead and do that now. Click any course that you like and add it to yourself. So we're going to click add course. We're going to scroll down the large list of courses. We're going to pick one like French two. We're going to select that and we're going to go down to the bottom and say add selected course. You can add as many courses as you like to yourself. I would recommend that whatever the students are in your class, that you add those courses in case you need to go in and take a little bit closer of a look at that material. Finally, don't forget to click submit. All right, once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and log out of Edgenuity, and then we're gonna go back into the login screen, but this time we're gonna select student, and we can go in and see what this class looks like. Oh wait, let's hold up and do one more thing. As it stands, the course probably has on the fact that you can't move freely through it. So if you have this option, and you may or may not, and if you don't, contact your administrator and they can do this for you, we're gonna go into the settings, and for this course, we're gonna allow ourselves to move freely so that we can jump around to each unit. Otherwise, you've gotta take the whole course to see all of it, and we don't need any of that. All right, if you have this ability, we're gonna go ahead and click back to course. We're gonna select the course with the little option here, and we're gonna go up to edit options. Now it's not important that you're in here, this is the stuff that we don't need to see as a teacher, but if you do have this ability, this will be what it looks like. We're gonna scroll down to where it says free movement. You can find it right under guided notes, if you have this ability. We're gonna click that, and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and click submit. It's gonna confirm, and at this point, now we can move freely through the course. So let's go check it out. Remember, log out first. I guess I should show you how to log out. To do that, go up to your profile image up at the top, it's usually your initials, scroll down to where it says sign out and go ahead and click that. Now let's take a look at what the students see. So on the login screen, make sure that you've clicked student. Your credentials should be the same as your educator credentials. So once you've got that all put in, go ahead and click login. Now here is what the students see. When they go into this course, they're greeted with a dashboard with all of their courses that are currently assigned. If they have one, they only see one of these tiles. If they have multiple classes, they'll see each of these tiles and a progress report on each one with a notification indicating what they need to do to get caught up and how much time and or assignments that may take. Other things that you can see in here as a student, you can see over here that they have a join course, which we don't use in our district, but they also have announcements. These will pop up every time that there's a shared new announcement 
This is not the email option that would be next to it. This mail icon is the email option. This is probably how most teachers are going to communicate with their students in Edgenuity. This is a group, individual, or whole class communication that a teacher can set up and communicate to their students. Information, questions, answers, um, reports, anything that you want to add in there. The announcements will be things that come from the administrators or people up above that are indicating to teachers and or students general things. You're going to deal mainly with the mail icon. So let's jump into one of these courses and take a look around a little bit. We'll start with the French 2 one that we added, even though I'm not very good at French. So we can click anywhere on it, on the tile itself, or we can click Next Activity. What you'll be greeted with is their course map screen. This is a great screen for students. In this particular course, it'll tell you what the date of the assignment and when it should be done. It should tell you the estimated time, and you can see that you can scroll freely through the entire unit. The units within each class are gonna be kind of consistent. They have a flow to them. There's usually some type of introductory type of assignment. So if we scroll up to the top, that's what this Welcome to French is. You're gonna see different things. So for this particular language class, you can see that there's an advisor assignment, there's reading and listening, there's another advisor, there's pronunciation, there's vocabulary. But if you were in a math course, you may see something different. Real quickly, I just wanna point out, here's a notification that I'm behind in this particular math. But you'll see that there's a warm-up, instruction, summary, assignment, and a quiz. And that's pretty repetitive through each section of each unit that they can interact with. So let's stay here in this one and take a look around a little bit more. You can see here on the side, these are the e-notes. And we'll go and take a look at those when we get into a lesson a little bit more in detail. But we can click on it here, and you'll see that it represents each unit that's in this class. And then if I click on them, I can click on each section within that unit. And if I have taken any notes, you'll see them here. All right, so let's go click on the next one down. This part here is going to give them a progress report. So this is the same type of report that you pull as a teacher. The students can see it as well. It'll give them a bar indicating if they're on time, on target, or behind. It'll show them their grades, and we'll talk more about the grades in a little bit. You can also see grades by category, so they can tell how they're doing in each particular category. The most important report for teachers and probably students that I find is this course report. I'll show you how to get to it as a teacher, but for a student, and this one won't have much information on it because I haven't done any of this class, but as I click this course report, I want you to see the categories that, that it presents. It will download and you're going to open it up as a PDF. And as you see here, again, it's going to be on the left. It's going to show you each section within each unit and then each part of those sections and when they have been attempted, when they've been submitted, how many attempts there was taken, the estimated time, and this is very accurate. The total time that the student took on that particular section and then the category that it would fall into for grading. Of course, it's going to finally show you the score. Again, you can see up at the top, they show you the, all three types of the grades. We'll go over that in a minute, and it'll show you your progress and your target completion that you're trying to shoot for. So a lot of information on this report. So now the students that we've seen have two different reports that they can access. This course report showing them how they're doing, and then more importantly, in this, in this bottom left corner, they have the progress overview. Okay, it's probably worth noting that it didn't show up here, but if the first time that students log in to Edgenuity, and they go into their class. They're gonna be greeted with two videos. One will give them a basic overview of how to interact, and the second one will give them a detailed review of this course map view and how to interact with lessons. Pretty much what I'm gonna do here. So let's take a look closer at some of these lessons. So let's click on this warm up just so you can see what it is. Now do remember that most of the information provided inside of Edgenuity is done through video. Now there are other places that they interact and or read in articles and stuff, especially in Englishes and languages, but for math particularly, there is a lot of video instruction, which is fantastic. It's great video. So let's take a look at what that looks like now. So I'm going to click on the warm up here. Now when students enter the course, they have to progress through each video entirely before they can rewind and or rewatch it. But once they've done that the first time, then they can, they can scroll forward and backward anywhere they want in the video to review information at any time. All right, as you can see here, the instructor goes through the material. There are some notes there. These can be guided notes, which we'll talk about in a minute. But on the left side of the video, you can see that there are places that they can highlight, not directly in the video, but anything else can be highlighted, especially their e-notes, which we'll take a look at in a second. There's an audio settings here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your students have headphones, especially if they're not all in the same, well, no matter what course they're in, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they have their own set of headphones for this. Obviously, any calculators that they need will be provided for them, and then any additional stuff will be provided below that. In this case, it looks like they give them the ability to type in math equations. On the right side over here, you're gonna find a plus, which is gonna be their menu option for these lessons. And then underneath that, your first thing you're gonna find is their e-notes. 
you notes are a fantastic way to take notes. And we'll talk in detail a little bit later how important notes are to this whole program. But eNotes then, they get a little box down here at the bottom that they can type, they can copy and paste pretty much any text, no images, but they can put anything that they'd like into that box and then they save it. And then when it's saved, you can see here that it pops up at the top. So for an example of that, they could jump over here to the glossary because vocabulary is a big part of this course as well. And you can see that each of these vocabularies does have text to speech, which is enabled throughout the program for the students. Also with translation, both verbally and by text that can be interacted with here under the English tab where you can see that you can have multiple different languages that you can have that translated to. Very nice. So let's take this text then and let's just go ahead and select some of it. I'd like to keep all of this text here. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control C to copy it. The right click option does not work within here. So once I've done that, I'm going to go back to my eNotes tab. I'm going to click inside of the eNotes window there and I'm going to control V. And you can see that that went in there and now I'm going to save. Once I save it, I should be able to come up here and see that that information right here was saved for me. So on the course map view that you could access those eNotes there as well. Now eNotes can also be accessible for quizzes and tests if that's allotted by the teacher. And sometimes we recommend that, that they take these good notes, they're allowed to use these for their assessment. One other last piece here that we're gonna take a look at is the transcript. This is everything that the teacher says inside of the video. So this is another good spot that they can take eNotes from and or go back and clarify what the teacher said if things moved a little too fast for them. Um, here's an example of putting this. You can select it and control C again to copy it and then take it back to your eNotes and control V to paste it inside of eNotes and then click save. And you'll see now that that transcript was added right there. So eNotes are very useful for our students. The last little bit I'm gonna show you here in this particular course is that this is a question that's asked immediately following in the warm-up, just kind of a checkup. But I wanted you to see this because it is a different type of question. Not all of the questions in Edgenuity, actually, I, I can't even say it's a majority, are multiple choice. They have a lot of different forms. There's matching, there's line drawing, there's short form response, there's projects. So this is very much like your classroom as opposed to some of the other online platforms where you're just clicking through multiple choice questions. Now there are multiple choice questions, but there are lots of other types of questions that they interact with here. When they're done doing this, you actually get to see this screen in another view on the teacher side. So you can actually take a little bit closer look if you're helping them or if they need another retake. All right, I think we're done exploring the student view right now. What I would encourage you to do is make sure that you add a course that's particular to your curriculum and go ahead and click through a little bit of that so that you can see what it looks like and what the students are interacting with. It gives you a much better idea of how to operate with your student, how to interact, and more importantly, how to help them. Okay, we're back in the educator site now. I wanna show you what that interaction looks like for a teacher, where you get to see some of those things and those attempts and lessons that the students have completed. I want you to see what that looks like to interact with some of that. In here, there are two ways to get to it. The shortest way is if on your dashboard, you see the students that you need to interact with, you can click on their ID number and you'll notice that it says course. You can click that, it'll take you right to where we need to go. Additionally, the other place that we can do this at is we can go to students, we can go to manage students, and then when your students are pulled up, you're gonna go ahead and click on one of your students and that's gonna go into his courses. So you're gonna find the course that you wanna interact with. So in this case, I'm gonna go back to the algebra class. You're gonna go ahead and click on the class, not just the dot, but go ahead and click on the class and that's gonna take you into that teacher course view. So this is the course view for this particular student, in this case, our Geek Demo 1. And you can see that up here at the top. If you ever see this little gold looking graduate at the top, that will just remind you what student that you're currently viewing is. So you'll have it in two different places. But once you're there, you can see that that whole course structure is down here on the left and you can expand to individually look at each part of those courses. On the right, it'll give you some basic information about the course. And then where we talked about things that you can interact with that student, if you scroll to the bottom, it'll show you how many attempts, if he has multiple attempts, you'll see multiple ones here, what the score is, if it's being scored, the start of the attempt, the total time spent, and then um, academic integrity, which we'll talk about later. Now, one thing I wanna urge you, not that we're talking about grading yet, but we might just a smidget, is that the time spent is very important. Remember when I told you that the, the estimated time for these sections is very accurate? So go ahead and do that and check that for yourself. You can do it as your student. See how accurately it takes you to go through that particular material and then what they estimated. It's pretty close. So if you notice here that the time spent is short, right? Or notice it doesn't tell you how long in this particular view that it is. But remember, we have that course report where we get that detailed information. So you can click that report open and take a little bit closer look at that estimated time. You can use that difference in the estimated time and the actual time to have a conversation with your student. 
right? They may be clicking a little fast, maybe they're not getting all the information. Whatever it happens to be, it gives you a piece of the puzzle to have a good conversation with that student to help them do this course a little bit better. All right, let's take a look at the right side now that we kind of understand how we're interacting with this particular page, this course, this teacher course map. So if you look up here, you can pass with a particular score of the actual current activity. You can bypass the activity. You can also change the score or you can reset the activity. All right, that was kind of an intro to our grading. So let's go back and take a look at what grading could look like from the dashboard as well. So remember, those are the two main places. This here, this teacher course map view, where you're gonna interact individually with a student in that particular assignment. And then two, you're also gonna do the same thing from the dashboard. So let's go take a look at the dashboard. Now for this demo, I haven't taken a lot of time to go through as a student and complete a lot of the assignments. So you, what you won't see on my screen right now is a bunch of alerts and things to do as a teacher. It just takes a lot of time. So I'll throw up an image here that will show you what it looks like if you have an actual class and students interacting with it. And this is from the dashboard, don't forget. So on the dashboard, and that's the main screen that you enter in on, you're gonna see alerts. And there's a couple different types of alerts. The most important thing to know about alerts is one, if it's punctuation, that means the student is stuck. They can no longer move forward in that particular course. All right? Time is a big factor of working within Edgenuity. And keeping students moving forward is our, one of our main goals. So punctuation is important. Deal with those immediately so that student can get moving forward again. Now let's talk about the different colors. So the first color we probably will pay attention to is yellow. That means that that assignment needs you to manually grade something in it. Um, generally, that will be some type of a writing thing that you have to evaluate. If it's in math, it'll be you evaluating an equation, possibly projects or labs in science. It'll look different for each course, but it, it means that there's something for you to grade. Now in there, back in our teacher course map view, what we were just in, in there, it will also provide you um, keys and rubrics to help assist you grade those particular items. The next color we're going to talk about is orange. Orange is going to mean that that student is ready to take a test, which means that you need to review that student's unit, take a look at all the stuff in his grades, and make sure that he's adequately ready to take that assessment, that test. This is where notes may come in. If those scores are low, you may ask to see what their notes look like, or navigate in and see what the e-notes look like from your side. If they don't look adequate, that might be an indication that the student hasn't prepared completely for the test. Now, remember, we always wanna keep them moving forward, but they need to be prepared to take the test. So you have to make a decision there. You'll figure out pretty quickly which students need a little bit more assistance in that regard and which ones are ready to go. Okay, before we end talking about course structure and the student view, let's take a look at where those e-notes are. The quickest way to find the e-notes is to go ahead and scroll onto the ID if you're in the dashboard, and you're gonna go ahead and click on it for that particular student. And then you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna choose courses. You need to go to that course again to be able to see it. Now we're in the course view for that particular student. So we're gonna scroll down to that algebra class again and we're gonna select the little choice edit dot here. And then up at the top, you're gonna to notice right here is the eNote tab. So we're gonna click on eNotes for that particular class. What that's gonna do, it's gonna take us to that student's eNotes. And we can again, see each unit and each section that they have and we can click on any of them to compare if they have eNotes. So for my particular example, I only have e-notes in the first section. So you can see all of those e-notes here and you can evaluate them. That'll be another good way for you to decide if that student's prepared. So if you click on another section and you notice that it's blank, that means that, that student's not prepared for that test. Again, another way to help you to make that decision of what to do with this student. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to have a conversation with them about the notes, the importance of the notes, maybe even model what note taking looks like. Maybe that's an issue for that student. But once you have that conversation, you need to decide if you're gonna go send them back. Obviously, you're gonna have a two-way communication so you maybe can tell if they're ready for that test without the e-notes and encourage them that they need to do it on the next one. Whatever that is, that's another part of the puzzle for you to make a good decision on how to move these students forward. All right, one last piece before we leave this talk about how to grade and what that looks like is that there is a built-in plagiarism checker into Edgenuity that runs automatically and can be done manually on all text-driven answers and responses for students. It does a good job of going through and identifying for you how, what the percentage of it that's being plagiarized, how many resources there are that it found that matches that particular material, and then the number of word count that that would be. Additionally, it gives you the location of the responses, and then, and then on the actual assignment, it will highlight in red what the actual plagiarized passages are. It will highlight parts that have minor changes and things that have been influenced by that. So that's a powerful tool for you in terms of text and responses coming in from students that gives you another tool to help best use and help move those students forward.
Okay, next let's talk about communication with an ingenuity because you're gonna have these students sometimes in front of you in our particular district and, and sometimes they'll be at home and they may need to communicate with you during your time. To do that, let's go take a closer look at that email option with an ingenuity. First things we wanna do is go ahead and on any of the screens that we're on, we'll notice that there's a mail icon up here in the right upper corner. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. In here, you'll notice I don't have any messages, but you get the general idea of what you can do to communicate with your students. Any new messages that you get from students will be indicated here, and any messages that you've sent to students will also be recorded here as well. So you can see you can click on new email, and that'll open up a dialog box for you to go ahead and craft your message to your students. In this particular area, you can type in different student names so you can do it individually. You can type in multiple students so you can send it to a group if you need to do that. And then finally, if you need to communicate with your whole class, if you type the name of your class in, that will also populate so you can send it to everyone that you have all at once. Obviously, it's a pretty much an email standard from there, but I do want you to know that you do get the ability to upload things so you can communicate and send information back and forth within Edgenuity. Okay, next, let's talk about reports. It plays a big part of this. I've already shown you a couple of reports. The course report would be one, um, but there are some other ones that we need to take a look at that you can use. And there are some ones that you may not use, but let's take a look at a couple of the more important ones that you may interact with more frequently. The first thing that we wanna do is navigate to that top menu bar. And you're gonna to wanna to access reports by scrolling down to more, and then you can scroll down to reports. Do notice that communication was in here and messages can be accessed this way as well coming from the last section. But under reports, the one that we have interacted with is that course report. Very useful, lots of information on that one. The next report that we wanna take a look at is the attendance log. So let's scroll down to the attendance log here and select that one. What you'll see is it'll populate for all students within your, your school. Now you're gonna come up here to classes and you're gonna select your class. You're gonna scroll down. We're gonna see if we can find that geek demo one, which is right here. We're gonna select that. And you'll notice that just the demo geek students have popped up. Now, from here, I do want you to note one important thing. This is the speed radar. So remember we talked about comparing time that they spent to the estimated time. This is a nice little tool that will highlight ones that are indicating some type of an issue, that they're too fast or that they're breaking the speed limit. What it will do is it'll put an indicator up on that, that speed radar of how many items in here for your students have been done too fast and it will also put a little orange box around each part so that you can take a closer look at those particular assignments and have conversations with those students. Okay, now that we're in this attendance log report, what you can do is you can click on any of the students within here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the first one, Geek One, and that's gonna provide me a detailed view of their sessions that they've attempted for whatever window is designed. So in this particular week, it gives us the week from the, the day that we're started, it gives us about seven days. And then additionally, I can change this to any time frame of that course. So I can take a particular look at any window that I like. Let's take a closer look at what information we get. Again, we get their start time to end time to begin. It will also give us our total time, so an hour and 44 minutes spent here. And in that time frame, they completed five activities. Now, comparing their time that they spent on each activity to the estimated time and how they are using it. So if there's dead time in between where they're not interacting with it, you'll notice it'll give us an idle time. So of that an hour and 44 minutes, I spent about 40 minutes actually interacting with the course and an hour and four minutes sitting idle. Well, that's because I was making a PowerPoint at the same time. So, but you can see by the length of idle time, you can tell that I was doing something different. I have seen some information out there just to kind of give you a general estimate of how this works. About 30 minutes of idle time will come up in longer sessions for the students. If you see anything over 30 for a longer session of the students, then that's starting to indicate that there were other things going on besides just interacting with the course. Again, gives you another piece of that puzzle to have a conversation with your students. All right, let's take a look at one last report. So to find the progress report, the easiest way is either from the dashboard or manage students, but we're gonna go to the dashboard this time. So if I click on the dashboard, I'm gonna come down to this ID number of the student that I'd like to see, which is that first demo geek, I'm gonna click on it. And you're gonna see here, it says the word progress. It also says email, so if you'd like to email them directly, you can use that as well. So let's click on that progress and see what, it what that report looks like. So here's a close up of that report. Again, a lot of the information is the same between these reports, but each one has a specific part that may be useful to you. So in this particular report, what I find useful is that it gives you a total number of the quizzes for them that they've taken and that they have available to take. So it's kind of a nice way to wait where they're at, how many more things that they have to do. 
Remember, moving forward and progress is the main factor that we're dealing with in this in edgenuity. So you can see the number of tests compared that they've taken, which is none for this particular student, and the total number of tests that they need to take. Same thing for exams and assignments. It'll also give you the weight by average that they have on each of those categories. And it will provide you the weight of those categories and how much they actually influence their grade. Okay, this is as good a spot as any to talk about the three grades that the students can see. So in here, let's look at the very first one at the top. It's called overall grade here. It's also sometimes just referred to as grade. That is their average of completed graded assignments. It's basically what you would do in your classroom. Here's what you got. Here's an average of all of them. Okay, if we look down here, the next one that we should probably pay attention to is this actual grade. The actual grade then takes that grade, their grade that they've earned, and then compares it to their progress. Now remember, it's super low on this example because I'm really, really behind in it. So basically, it's all overdue. So that weighs into that grade. So you can see I had an 83% on everything that I've done, but because I'm so far behind, basically the whole course, it's weighed it down to 2.3%. So that grade helps kind of show you how they're doing based off pace. So if I was at an 83%, but I was on target, that grade would also be an 83%. The last part of the grade here that we can take a look at is the relative grade. Now this doesn't play a giant role initially in the course. It'll play a bigger role towards the end because again, they need to complete it within a time frame. So this grade then says, whatever your average, your grade is, your overall grade that you've earned, and then if you take zeros for everything that you have left to do because you're running out of time, what's your grade? So this can be super useful to see if the students will have enough grade to pass the class if they're running out of time. Again, something that you'll use at the end of the course. All right, the last section we're gonna talk about is expectations and best practices. These would be things that we've learned or have seen that will help you be the best teacher and provide the best environment for your students. All right, first, you wanna treat this classroom just like you would your normal classroom, the one that you were in every day of the year. You wanna make it your own. You wanna provide then for your students, just like you would on day one, a set of rules and expectations. This is where you're going to show how you would like your classroom to perform. You already know that though, but for this classroom, it's gonna vary a little bit different because it's inside of Edgenuity. So you're gonna to wanna to make those modifications to your syllabus. But things that you're gonna to wanna to talk about is modeling note-taking. That would be one that's super important. We believe that note-taking can be the key factor for students to find success in this classroom. We also wanna make sure that you're gonna model what communication for your students will look like. Meaning that if they're in the classroom with you, great, that's super easy. But if they're not, are there times that they can communicate with you? Are there times that you can send an email? Because there are going to be roadblocks for them. And you wanna make sure that they know that they can communicate with you at certain points in times. Now, I'm not saying make yourself available 24 hours a day, obviously not, but you may have times where you check your email that you could provide for these students. If not, that's okay too. Just make sure they understand that they need to be in the classroom to communicate with you, or you'll get to the messages that are in Edgenuity as they show up. All right, you're gonna also probably wanna talk about prescriptive testing and pre-testing, which we haven't talked about yet in our video. So most likely for credit recovery for our district, we're gonna have prescriptive testing turned on. Prescriptive testing then, real simply, is a large exam-like test that they do before they start the course. That test, which I think has a 180 minute time limit by default, will have questions in it that correspond to all the different units and sections within their unit that they're about to take. As they complete these questions successfully, it removes them from the course and the exam. So for a quick example, if they score 50% on the prescriptive test, what should happen then is 50% of their material from their course should be removed for them. And they're only gonna see that other 50% that they weren't successful on. Additionally, what should happen is that their exam should be only that 50% that they were learning in the class, not the stuff that they were successful with. You're gonna to wanna to describe that for your students so that they understand what they're getting into and to take that prescriptive test seriously because it can significantly change their experience in this course. The other thing that they may see, which we tend to use for our credit forward classes, is pre-tests. Pre-tests then is like the quiz for each unit at the beginning of each unit. They take that quiz and if they do well on it, it removes stuff from the course and then they can just finish those parts. And then the last quiz will be, a, a, again, kind of a replicate of that actual course. Now, in the pre-testing, if they pass it successfully, then they pass that section of the course as well, so they can move ahead forward. 
It's important to note that all testing needs to be done inside of the classroom with the teacher to your students. So that would be prescriptive testing, that would be testing in exams. Now we also may add in there that retakes for quizzes after the two that they take initially that they don't have to interact with the teacher with, if they give them a third one, then we would recommend that you also make that possibly inside of the classroom, depending on the situation. All right, so let's talk about the total number of quizzes here. So in the course, the students can work through the lesson. When they get to the quiz, they take it like normal. If they're not successful, then they get to retake that quiz, but they should be able to do that without interacting with you. That means that they've had two attempts at this quiz before they need to see you. On the third time, they're gonna be blocked, of course, and so a notification will come up. You'll be notified. And at that point, you need to review everything with them, see all the different parts, and make the best decision on how they wanna move forward. If they're close at 58%, remember our threshold is 60, you're gonna to wanna to move them on. But if they're at a 30%, you may need to see where they're lacking or improvements can be made. So that's your decision to make. But what we do say is that, that we would like to keep that to a minimum of three takes per quiz, because remember, moving forward is our biggest hurdle. So keeping them going and sacrificing a little bit on the quiz score is what we're looking to do. So if you do run into a pretest situation, it is important to note that the first pretest that they take, and again, these are the little mini quizzes, not the big prescriptive test, the little pretest at the beginning of the unit does count as one of the retakes. So the pretest would be one, the actual quiz would be two, and then they'll be blocked. They don't actually get a second attempt. So then taking that to the test, they should really only have one take on the test, but there may be situations where you wanna add a second one. I would highly, highly, highly recommend not adding three and four test retakes. The reason for that is those can take up to 40 minutes, again, if done correctly. So that's a large time hurdle that you're sending them back to continually take these tests. The way that we run Edgenuity, we like to have them do 10 hours of time by a certain threshold or date to show that these students are actually engaging with the course. If they don't make that time and date, then they need to be dropped. So there should be a, a threshold of 10 hours, hopefully consecutively, but again, understanding that these students are gonna come in and out, that may not be the case. Next, we also wanna recommend that they do have paper and pencil available, because as we know, doing stuff virtually and not getting stuff on paper can be a significant deterrent for students to do well. Um, not just in math, but all courses, they should really be transferring information down on paper and pencil, scratch work, solving equations, writing drafts, things like that, working through labs. There'll also be times where they have to upload work, and so this would also support that as well. That takes us into our notes. We've talked about notes in this video quite a bit, and I just wanna re-support the fact that we believe that they're powerful key for students to do well in this course, making sure that students have notes. To add another piece to this, if the students aren't successful in their lesson, and they, they don't have any notes or they have poor notes, it would be a good idea then to make sure that you say, hey, I want you to go back and take good notes. Here's what good lo notes look like. I told you in the syllabus, but I'm gonna show you again, and then maybe sending them back. Doing this early in the course would be a really good idea, depending on how it goes, so that they can model that behavior throughout the whole unit, but they can take these notes then, show them to you, you can discuss them, and you say, here's your retake then. So you can use that as a bar for the students to take that last retake on a quiz, possibly on a test if that needs to be done. Just the last few here, obviously they're gonna to need to have headphones because this is a video driven course. So they're gonna to need to have their headphones daily. Additionally, we recommend that they don't have any other devices or particularly phones out and about. You're gonna to wanna to encourage them to put them away or you can collect them however you choose to do that. But that's just gonna be a distraction and or lead to some additional plagiarism or being off track. And then finally, we recommend that there isn't student collaboration, even if they happen to be on the same course and they're working closely together. We've not found that that's been a successful working relationship. So we would encourage that if that's the case that you're involved and that you bring that collaboration together and then you can work with a group of small students, but not encouraging them to work together. All right, with that, it brings our session to a close. Hopefully you've learned a couple of things. We have covered everything from basic navigation to looking at it as a teacher view for the course. You've also seen it, the course as a student. We've talked about communication. We've also talked about reports as little pieces of the puzzle to understand what to do with these students. And then finally, we talked about best practices. So at this point, you're ready to go. You know enough about Edgenuity to start your class. Maybe you're not the supreme expert, but you really do feel pretty comfortable in there, or you should. You can always rewatch the video to get up to speed again if you need to. But as always, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found something you liked and we'll see you next time.